All right, we're going to talk about uh, finding out the will of God and how to finish your course. Um, you know, a lot of Christians kind of get the mindset of, you know, um, hanging, on to the, you know hanging on to the bitter end, tie a rope at the bottom and hang on, um, hope I'll make it in somehow, some way, by some hook or crook, you know, uh, make it in by the skin of your teeth, all the terminology you make that represents a really a defeatist attitude. Represents a mindset of, man, I had some things going in my life at one time, but I'm at the point now, if I can just slide in at the last second, that's all I, I just, just, you know. And that's not a victory mindset. Amen. And that's not finishing your course with joy. Uh, in the book of Acts it says this, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, Paul obviously talking here, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So Paul wanted to finish his course how? With joy. Well, how are you going to finish your course with joy? Number one, you've got to find out what his will is. So you can't finish a course where you don't know what it is. You can't win the game if you don't know the rules. You can't achieve a goal if you don't know what the goal is. How many of you have ever been involved in something and you didn't know, had no idea what the purpose was? Well, how would you know if you succeeded? Knowing the will of God for your life. Now, I don't mean that you're going to know every last detail. A lot of times God will show you the end result and then you've got you to just walk it out by faith to get there. But you've got to know what the purpose is. Remember, um, at least when God spoke to Abraham, Get thee out of that country from thy father's house, from thy kindred, and go into a place that I will show thee. In other words, get moving. I got a place. Unless he knew the goal, the goal was going somewhere else, and God was going to show him where it was. Okay? And then as, as time came, he began to show him more and reveal more. But he, he ultimately showed him what it was, and he had to know what, what the will of God was to fulfill his course. You've got to know what your will is, what God's will is to finish your course. So let's, number one, let's find out what the, how, how do we find out the will of God? Okay? How do we find out what the will of God is? Look at Matthew chapter 26. Um, it looks like an 8 without glasses. My goodness. Janie and I were sitting around the, trying to look at a phone number today on, a, on something. And we were activating a card we had that came, a new replacement came. And, and she says, well, it's like a, it looks like a 316. I thought it, I thought it was a 326. Or I thought it was a 328. Got my glasses on. It was a 0. I thought, oh, dear Lord, <laughs> don't know who we would have called. But Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Hallelujah. We're in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. Verse 30, we're just back at the verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that being James and John, uh, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And then cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away, went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not be passed away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And then he prayed and prayed the third, uh, verse 44 says, pray the same words again. Uh, here we have Jesus submitting himself to the will of God. Now, obviously, you can tell from the context of how he prayed, he already knew what he had to do. If this, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Then he comes back and says, if it, if, if it can't pass, then I'll submit to your will. I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit. He was consecrating and dedicating himself to the will of God. You have to spend time with the Father. See, Jesus spent time with the Father, spent time in the Word, and found out what the will of the Father was, and then he submitted to it. Man, you've got to submit to the will of God. Amen? But you do it, you know, and, and then when you think you know what God's will is, you still have to present that to Him and consecrate to it. Amen? We'll, and we'll get to some consecration scriptures here in a minute. But Jesus went before the Father, 
knowing what his will was and, and submitted to it. Now he didn't, he said, if there's any other way, let us cut pass, but not my will, your will be done. Now here's a quandrum for a lot of Christians. There are a lot of Christians who come and start saying God's will is this and God's will is that, and really it was just their will, and they wouldn't submit their will to his will, and they're just telling everybody that God told them this and God told them that. And I just like Brother Hagin used to say, I'd rather hear a donkey bray in a tin barn at midnight and hear such stuff as that. There's a lot of people going around saying God said this and God said that and God never said it. It's just that they don't want to do his will. And so they've come up with their will and they never submitted their will to his will. I'm going to tell you, you'll never finish your course with joy. You can finish your course, might be defeated, beat up, run over, and finish early if you get my drift. But not with joy. What did Jesus say? He said, my meat, remember that when, when is to do the will of him that sent me. We find joy in obeying God. Amen. We find joy in obeying God. Thank God. I mean, that's what it should be. And so as, as God gives us instruction and God places his will in our, in our hearts, we need to do that. Amen. And if we're not sure, we need to go before him and, and say, you know, I'm not sure about this. What do you want me to do? God can tell you. He will tell you. Now, I know a lot of people who go to the Lord telling them that because they're hoping he won't say anything because they don't want to do what they know he wants them to do. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you know and God knows you know, which he knows, and you come back to him and say, what do you think about this? He ain't going to talk to you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's not going to tell you to do again what he's already told you to do, and you won't do it. Yeah. Well, I went to the Lord and asked him about it. He didn't tell me anything, so I must not be supposed to do it. Dad Hagen always had this statement. He said, you can go by much, as much by what the Lord doesn't say as what he does say. Amen. Yep. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't tell you no, go. Now, if he's telling you stop, stop. Amen. All right. Um, so Jesus had a revelation of the will of the Father, yet he went before the Father to prove it out, said, if, if this cup can pass me, is, is there some other way? He, he was dealing with, he was dealing with clarifying the will of God, making sure there wasn't any other way. And then at that point, once he realized there was no other way, he consecrated to that will. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Now let me say this. God doesn't mind your will as long as it doesn't go crosswise with his. God doesn't mind you having your will, your desires, as long as they're not contrary to his. Now let me say this. If, you're, if you decide that you want to trade in your wife for the newer model, that's contrary to his will. He does mind your will. Amen. You don't get to trade them in every two years like you do a car lease. That went over big. It just don't work that way. Y'all here, you're going home. You don't get to do that. No, you made a commitment to her. All right. So once, once you have spent time with the Lord, these, these are real simple. Let me, and, and listen, most of you know these things, and most of you in most cases already know what the will of the Lord is. I've seen a lot of wasted prayer trying to pray themselves out of God's will. Now, I'm going to share something. Um, And, I, and, and if, if you show me, you, you might go, oh, I, I remember that. Well, I'm not, I'm not doing that for that purpose. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. But we had a situation. We had, we had somebody in our church on staff, and they were, um, and uh, they started getting a desire to go do something different, and they began to pray about it, and kept praying about it, and kept praying about it, until they prayed themselves, at that point, out of the will of God. Resigned from the staff. We're going to go somewhere else, start another church in another uh, place several hours away. Um, I mean, everything they were doing along those lines was had integrity. They weren't going to do anything that was close to hurt the church, that kind of thing. Um, but we were having a church service, and, and they, they resigned. And, and, and then, then once they resigned from staff, 
and supposed to be moving, nothing went right. Everything started falling apart. No doors were opening. Everything was going, as far as them accomplishing what they thought they were supposed to do, it wasn't happening. And, um, and, and, and they got around other people who were prophesying over them. The Lord's going to use you here, and the Lord's going to do this with you, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, listen, number one, before you, before you, you know, every word of y'all to be judged. You ought to have, when things like that are given, somebody's going to come prophesy over you, you better make sure somebody's an authority that can judge it. You know, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who want, who want to be a, a good news bearer and, and gather uh, friendships and, and, and um, respect unto themselves by telling people what they want to hear. We have to be careful about those things. So anyway, um, after about a month and a half after, uh, of leaving staff, uh, this, this family was, um, they, were, they were in tough shape. No money, no job, no income. I came to church one Sunday morning, and uh, I kind of stuck my head out. I, I used to park back here because we had a, uh, now, now we re remodeled the church. I, have, I can come into my office right up front, right through my own door. But I didn't have it back then, uh, so I would come in here. And we had this kind of like a, what they call a green room. I just come in out from the outside in this back green room, and um, you know nobody nobody saw me come in or whatever. I would just come in, and, but I kind of opened, cracked the door, looked out, and, and, and saw the wife come in. And I'm telling you, she looked like Pigpen, spiritually speaking. Cloud was hanging over this 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 this, uh, this lady, and my heart just <laughs> my heart just went out. I knew they were struggling. I knew it was tough. You know, and my heart just, just re I mean, I'm telling you, I said, uh, I sat there and I, I sat in the back room and I got to thinking about it. I'm thinking, Lord, they're, they're just in a tough place. You know, I, I now, I, I didn't think they should make the move they're making, but you know what? That's, that's, they, they, they prayed about it. They believe it's the will of God. I don't, you know, we're not trying to shipwreck them. We want, we want people to be blessed. You know, we want people to be blessed. We want people to succeed. Amen. Even when you don't think it's the right thing for them to do, you still want them to be successful. You want them to succeed. You don't want people to fail. You don't want them to crash and burn. You're not looking for destruction or misery. You want blessing in people's lives. And um, so uh, worship got going. I came out on the platform. I look at them, and I'm going to tell you, it, like, like Pigpen brought in, you know, his 10 brothers or something, a cloud of darkness just hanging right over the, the wife particularly. And, um, and I said, Lord, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to receive an offering for him. I did. And I'm telling you just as clear as you could fathom, I heard the Lord go, no! I thought. And I'm thinking, why? And he didn't answer me. I asked why. He wouldn't tell me anything. I thought, okay. And just so you know, I want to. <laughs> I want to help them. I mean, you know. And um, so we're sitting there going through the worship service. And I'm up here, you know, in this kind of conversant mindset with the Lord about, how come you won't let me bless them? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and so we're, this is kind of going on on the platform. Uh, I'm pig pins out here. Y'all know who Pig Pen is, right? Don't you? Snoop, uh, Peanuts gang. You know, he he walked around with his blanket and the dust cloud all around them. Well, you know, you, you can get that way spiritually. Yeah. Well, there's a dust cloud all over you as you're going everywhere. And um, so we received the offering, and then when I, and then we was receiving the offering. The wife reached in her purse and took out the last bit of change she had, and she put it in the offering. Because I was going to take, I was going to stop worship and take up an offering. That's what I was going to do. She put it in, and as soon as she did that, I heard the Lord go, "Now you can do it." Okay, Lord. So I stopped, you know, finished service, we're going, and I just start ministering on walking in love, you know, uh, helping people even when they make decisions you don't think are the right ones and that kind of thing. Started sharing along those lines. And so I, I ministered along those lines, you know, because I had people coming to the church. They're not supposed to do this. They're not supposed to do that. Well, okay, but they are, you know. I, I've, I've told them what I thought. Basically, they, they think that they prayed this. And here's the thing. They had prayed it and 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 prayed it until they got a king. Remember Israel? All right. So, um, 
Now, I, I need to back up a step. The night before, one of the reasons I was really in tune with what was going on, the night before, we had just come back off a of vacation on a Saturday night. The husband had called me and left a message and said, I need to talk to you. And I, we came to church, we met uh, 9 or 10 o'clock at night, talked for about an hour or so. And it's just talking about things not going. I said, look, here, here's my, and I'm going to give you my counsel. I said, look, I said, you, you have a heart for God. I know that. And I know they do. They still do. You know, um, they love the Lord. We love them. We, they love the Lord. We love them. The Lord loves them. You know, um, I said, the Lord, you know, God will bless you. You know, and if, even if you're missing the Lord, Israel wanted a king. They got a king, and God blessed the king. The king became God's will for them because they demanded it. I said, and so you know, even if you've, if, even if you've gone this way, and I was using it as a point of encouragement, you know, that even though they wanted a king and God didn't want them to have a king, God still anointed the king. And even though you may have missed it and in, in, in praying something out or going in a certain direction, um, because your heart toward the Lord is right, even though if you've missed it, he'll still bless and anoint you and he'll still be good. You, you know, you'll, you know, you'll still be blessed. Maybe, it may not be the fullness of what the Lord had, but you know what? There's a lot of people who don't always get the fullness of what the Lord has and still, yeah. So you, you kind of have to, uh, you understand we preach the ideal and we also realize people live in the, rea in the real. And sometimes people just need some help here and there and they don't always make it where you think they should or where they could have achieved to. But you know what? If they were shooting for the stars and made the moon, it's better than shooting for the treetops and just get, and getting there. All right. So we'd have that conversation. Well, he goes home, and all he could think about all night long is Israel wanted the king. I'm thinking I gave him good counsel. You know, they're moving on down the road. You know, that's that's how I'm, that's how this whole thing's taking place. So the next one, so we're at the offering. You know, we're about to take up the offering, receive the offering, and so I, I, I minister along this lines for a while. And I'm talking. You know, understand? I'm talking about the will of God. I had to share the whole back. I'm gonna have to share this whole backstory in order to make sense out of what I tell you. Um, and so I had them come up. We put chairs up here, and I had them come up. I said they've been without income for six weeks or whatever it was. Some people gave their whole paychecks. We see, and we had like I think we had 80 people that morning. Twenty-eight hundred dollars. And um, they went back to the seat. And they're going back to the seat. The husband and the wife said, you know, we're not going, don't you? And, the, and, and then here's what, here's what was said later. And, I don't remember, and he came up and said, Pastor Ed, thank you. You know, he, those words have, 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 have just been ringing in my ear all that long. Israel wanted a king, and I don't want a king. You know, um, I'll be forever indebted to you for, you know. And I didn't mean it in the way of you're making a mistake, you get your king. I meant it in the way of, you know, God still anointed the king. Even though it wasn't his will, I'm in it totally on a on a different plane. But um, later, as we talked about this, this was one of the statements that was made. We prayed about this and prayed about this and prayed about this. See, you can bludgeon the Lord so much with prayer along a certain line, He'll let you go do it, and not be in the will of God or His perfect will. We don't want that for anyone. When you go to the Lord and he's not giving you yes, don't keep pestering him about it. I want to marry so-and-so. Yeah, he's so good looking. He, look, he might be good looking on the outside and a devil on the inside. Or <clears throat> you might want to quit your job because there's sinners there. And the Lord's telling you, and you're saying, Lord, can I quit? And he's not telling you. You keep asking him. He'll just let you do what you want to do. Amen. They prayed themselves. And then ultimately admitted that they weren't supposed to go. They prayed themselves out of the will of God. They were about to make a, a move that because they had prayed it and prayed it and prayed it. You've got to be careful. And here's, what I, here's my counsel to you. If you're praying about something and you're not getting anywhere with it, um, Lynn Hammond, some of y'all know who Mac Hammond is. All right, well, his wife, Lynn, um, had been praying about something for several months one time. And she's just getting frustrated because she wasn't getting anywhere. Was it? She finally called Dad Hagen up and said, Dad, I've been praying about this. 
and I'm just not getting anywhere. He said, that's because the Holy Ghost hit and taken hold with you. <laughs> well, that'll, that'll, that'll just settle it. If the Holy Ghost hit and taken hold with you, guess what? You shouldn't be messing with it. If you're going, you're trying to pray along a certain lines and the Holy Ghost just won't hook up with you, there's a reason that he won't hook up with you. He's not connecting with you because you're not praying along the right lines about something. And we're not talking about intercession or anything like that. We're talking about praying things out, about ascertaining the will of God and doing things. I'm telling you, when you we need to learn. We need to learn. That we're going to the Lord and we're not getting anywhere and he's not hooking up with us. We might need to start, okay, now Lord, I've been trying to pray this direction now and, and I'm not getting it. Why? What direction should I be praying in? And then, ascertain, and then go back and ascertain the will of God. Because if you're trying to push something out there, eventually if, if you keep praying without him hooking it up and keep pushing it, he'll just let you go do it. It's like the, the kid who comes to you and goes, please, 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 please. And you find, you said, no, 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 please, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no. And you finally get, and what happens? They know if they beat you down long enough, you'll just give in. Don't beat, don't beat the Lord down. Because he will get tired of saying no to you and just let you go do what you want to do. He may, and revert to the, if you're going to be dumb, you're going to have to be tough school of hard knocks. Hello. It's just a whole lot easier to learn or accept no the first time. Isn't that right? <laughs> Dad Hagen had a story of a, of a woman in his church. She was an older woman, filled with the Holy Ghost, flowed in the gifts of the Spirit. Spiritual woman. But she met some old geek. And she got to dating him and seeing him. Came to Brother Hagin and said they were going to get married. He says, well, what, now, now, what, now what kind of man is he? Well, uh, you know, well, he, he, he said he'll serve the Lord or whatever. And, and, uh, and, and what, what, kind of, what do you know about him? You know, does, he, does he drink? Where does he go to church? Well, yeah, he said he'd stop drinking if I'd marry him. Now, you know better than that. You don't need to. Oh, uh, yeah, but I love him. I love him. Went on and married him. He said, uh, he said old women can be just as dumb as young women sometimes. And that's the truth. Well, in the meantime, she's getting married. He, he takes a pastor in the city, not that far away, but somewhat distance away. And, um, you know, they've been over there. They've moved in. They're in their new pastorate. And, and I guess a few couple, three weeks into the, living in the, new, in the new town with the new church. And, and looked down the sidewalk and saw this woman walking down the street. He, he said to the sister, he said, is, is that so-and-so? He said she was all bent over, beat up, black and blue. And, uh, and said about the time she got, you know, how I many? a lot of the old houses used to have the little picket fences in the front yard with the gate at the sidewalk. Remember those little neighborhoods? You know, kind of a, we'll leave it the beaver type neighborhoods. Or Mr. Wilson, anyway. Said so about the time she hit the gate, she opened the gate. I want to know one thing. I want to know, and kept hollering. I want to know one thing. And finally, he got her calm down and said, "Sister, calm down. What, what is it you want to know? I want to know how come the Lord put him off on me." And he said, before he knew it, he opened his mouth and said, uh, "The Lord didn't put him off on you. You want to be old geek? You got him." See. About oh, a month or so after they got married, a few, a few days, weeks, whatever it was, just a short time, uh, he, coming home from work, stopped off the bar, got drunk, came home. She said something he didn't like. He jumped on there about beat her to death. She'd been two weeks in the hospital and just got out and came over to ask him why the Lord put that man off on her. See? She wouldn't follow the leading of the Lord. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers, as is the manner of some. Hello. He'll stop drinking if you marry him. You think women just can't be that dumb, you know? He, if he won't stop, if he ain't stopped drinking before you marry him, he ain't going to stop afterwards. If he won't stop running around before you marry him, he ain't going to stop afterwards. If he ain't going to stop shooting up and smoking dope before you get married, he ain't going to stop afterwards. Hello. 
She finally got the man saved. But, you know, years and years of praying and living through a difficult time. Finally ended up getting saved. He, he made heaven, but I'll tell you what, it, you know, he, like he said, he, he, he's fully convinced she took 10 years off her life putting up with that stuff. Well, she knew the will of God, but she, she wanted what she wanted, and she went against it. If you're going to finish your course with joy, go ahead and ascertain and or go ahead and yield to what you already know the will of the Lord is. And stop fighting it. Stop fighting it. I know people who want to preach that couldn't preach themselves out of a wet bag made out of paper towels. Yeah, but I want to preach. If you're not called, you don't need to be doing it for you and for the people listening to you. Nobody needs to listen to somebody that ain't called. Hello. And you don't need to be doing it if you're not called. Hello. Because you know, they know, everybody around you knows, the devil knows, and heaven knows you ain't doing it right. Because if you're not called, you're not called. And that's, you can't, you can't will a calling into existence. The gifts and callings are of God, and they're without repentance. They come from God. Amen. God sets some in the church. Not everybody summoned the church. Amen. So, once we do find out what the will of God is, okay? I know a lot of times, see, a lot of people make this, would talk about this and never talk about the negative side. But see, I'm a pastor. I've got to talk about the side where people live and they want to run and skirt the issues and all that kind of stuff because people live there. That'd be, that'd be great to come in as a guest speaker and just be able to do, you know, find out what God's will is, do it, and run off, hallelujah, and just, you know, blow in, blow up, and blow back out of town. But I'm pastor. I've lived with people. I've watched them. I've watched them skirt things. I've watched them circumvent things or try to circumvent things. I've watched them do things under the guise of what God said or God, this is God's will. And it's all bogus. They're just trying to get out of doing what they know the Lord wants or has told them to do. And we don't, listen, you're going to be successful. You're going to have to just follow the full counsel of God. Amen. Once you have ascertained to commit to it. Jesus said in John 4, 34, we said this earlier, my meeting is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. John 5, 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of him that hath sent me. I'll tell you something. There is a safety net. There is a safety net in pursuing the will of God and not your will. And let me say this. Going to the Lord, this is my design and this is my desire and this is my plan, bless it, is a whole lot less productive and takes more time than just going on, Lord, what's your will? Because it's already blessed. God's will is already blessed. Amen. Uh, John 6, 38 says, For I came down to heaven not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will that sent me, that, I, that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again in the last day. And um, let's run over to Hebrews chapter 10. John 6, 38 and 39. If we commit to the will of God, you know, I've seen too many people make the wrong moves because they wanted something they weren't called to or equipped for. Amen. You know, it amazes me how many people go out into a like, place like Tulsa and they get, and they really get involved in a ministry and they get under the anointing of that ministry and they think it's them. And they want to run out in the same town and they build a following or whatever because they, they, while they were functioning there, they were really functioning under that anointing. Uh, oh, oh, I don't believe that. Go ask Abraham and Lot about that deal. The only reason Lot prospered is because he was under Abraham's umbrella of anointing to prosper. Hello. 
Had he been left to his own and never been with Abraham, he'd have ended up on the rocks way earlier in life than he did. Because we do know the first thing he did when Abraham said, look, we are too great together. We can't divide together. Uh, you choose. And he chose the best places next to Sodom. Gave Abraham the dump, and he still went out there and prospered. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Lot's anointing. It was Abraham's anointing. Lot was functioning under that umbrella. But the minute he moved out away from him and got into the city, things started going bad. To the point that his wife was so consumed with the lifestyle they were living in the city, she, in disobedience to God, turned back and looked and turned to a pillar of salt. He even offered his daughters to the homosexual men of that city to keep them from trying to come in and rape the angels, which would not have gone over. I'm talking about giving over to a reprobate mind. Angel will cut you off. Bling. Anyway, Lot operated under Abraham's anointing of prosperity, and he prospered and flourished just being in association with that. And you, know, you can get into a ministry and get under an anointing and flourish and prosper in, your, in preaching or ministry because you're under that gift. But outside of that, unless established, forth, etc., it won't function or not function properly. I see people miss their callings because they disassociated with the place God connected them to because they wanted to be on their own, have their own thing. One of the things I told the Lord the last year I was at, at, on, an assistant pastor at the church I was at was if you want me to stay here until Jesus comes back, that is what I will do. I will stay here. I will minister. I will serve this man. I will honor him and I will serve him and work for him until you come back if that's what you want me to do. That's what I told the Lord. Next thing I know, I'm here. But I was called. I didn't call myself. I didn't, I didn't leave because I was frustrated. Did you ever get frustrated? Yeah, sure. It always happens. I had people try to get me to come follow with them. Had people in the church come to me. If you ever start a church, I'll go with you. And I told them, no, you won't. You know what I told them? I said, I'll move so far away, you can't come. Why? Why am I going to go and, and, and have a position under another man's anointing, another man's calling, where I'm, I'm, I'm being developed or, or, or God's using me to help, help him and then turn right around and go out and use that against him to build my own ministry. Now, I know I'm talking ministry-wise and people out there listening, but, you know, it's wrong. It's the wrong way to do things. It's, it's, it's lack of integrity. It's not godliness. And so I, I, I just don't think they're doing you right here. I think, uh, man, I'll tell you what. If, if, uh, if you should start church, I'll go with you. <laughs> nope. Won't happen. One minister came into town one time and said, look, we're getting ready to start a church in another city, uh, somewhere else in the country. They were traveling ministry. They were going to start, start pa traveling and start pastoring. And, uh, and how, how often do you get to preach? Well, will you come help us? I said, can't do it. God sent me here. I know what goes on. Had another church in town call me up and say, look, we want you to come and preach four Wednesday nights in a row for us. I didn't know they were trying me out. I just thought, you know, they wanted me to preach four times because they were, they were, same, they were from the same denomination I had been growing up. Families all knew each other. I thought that was what it was about. Found out later they were trying me out. You know why they offered me the job? I couldn't sing. It wouldn't have mattered. I wouldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, they wanted me to be worship leader and associate pastor. You just wouldn't want to see me as a worship leader. Anyway, you just trust me. I mean, some people say, Pastor, are you saying okay? Well, that, that, that's it. I'm okay now. You should have heard me 20 years ago. It's taken me 20 years ago from horrible to okay. <clears throat> now, that being said, we don't, we, we don't operate on someone else's anointing thinking that, that that's ours. Well, it's, it's God's, well, yeah, but it's when God put on somebody. It's, not, it's still God, maybe it may still God, but it's when God set on someone. 
It's not for you. It's not for you. You don't get to pick it up just because you, you showed up. Amen. And this, this could go by association with other people's gifts. Now, maybe you're in the church and you're a gifted singer. I want to sing. Well, if you can't sing, you can't sing. I mean, uh, I know somebody got upset and wrote, please let me, please let me sing in the choir. <laughs> please let me sing in the choir, in the choir. Please let me sing in the choir. Y'all ever heard that song? Oh, Lordy. Uncle Charlie, one day he always wanted to sing in the choir. They wouldn't let him. Why? He couldn't sing. I mean, you, you don't want to be singing and all of a sudden somebody comes in and destroys the whole song. Gets everybody else off key. But he died one day. And they were in church and they heard a voice come from the heavenly choir. Now I'm singing in the choir, in the choir. If, you, if you're not, you can't. Well, I, God gives me the desires of my heart. I want to sing in the choir. That's mis misapplication. How about go do what you do have to give? Maybe your gift is administrative. Maybe it's, it's an organizing in the church. Then use your gift. Find out what God's will is in every arena. You know, um, there are things ministry-wise I'm not called to do. I am not a Mark Brzee style teacher. I don't go line on line, precept on precept for four hours and have, you know, 7,500 scriptures. I am as extemporaneous as has ever been born. Some people say, well, you know, uh, you could, uh, you could uh, study more and have more scriptures. I always have scriptures. I just never use them. I'll use one and run off. <clears throat> well, see, a teacher looks at that and thinks I'm, I'm, I'm whatever. I look at him and think he's too worried. You know, we can get off on all this stuff or, or start de desiring to be like each other. Is that hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to ring tone like that. <laughs> Brother Bill got caught. All right. Now, when you have ascertained and know God's will for you, not somebody else's will for somebody else that you're trying to copy or keep up with. <laughs> I remember when we got out of Rhema, uh, 1981 we graduated. And I'm going to tell you, everybody that came out of Rhema in 1981, I mean, you may have a few people say they were called to be evangelists, but 95% all came out saying, I'm called to be a prophet and a teacher to the nations. Well, because Dad Hagen was a prophet and a teacher, and everybody wanted to be a, they were, they were called to be a prophet and a teacher like Dad Hagen. They're going to have their traveling ministry, and they're going to stand up and make, you know, go around and prophesy and teach everywhere, you know, all over the place. And, you know, and I'll never forget, I was, I was back in my uh, Greenville uh, for about, oh, five, six weeks, and the Lord hit me right on top of his head and said, I called you to be a pastor. And I went, that's a cuss word. <laughs> You know, that's how, that's how people felt. I didn't know anybody that came out of Raymond saying they were going to be a pastor. And if they did start a church, it was really a teaching center. They just went and taught. Remember those, Brother Bill? They wouldn't even call them churches. They called them teaching centers. Oh, but, oh, time for confession. Would you like to admit up to what, Brother Bill? Been there, done that, he said. Healing, yeah. Springs, Faith. Healing Springs Faith Center. It's not about church. It's a, it's a teaching center. You know, we, we, we come and we get taught. We don't, we don't, it's not a church. No, we don't, we don't, we don't have church government. It's, we're just a teaching center. God needs pastors. God called me to be a pastor. I'm not a, travel, I'm not a traveling teacher, you know. And I'll be honest with you, I'd rather preach than eat. Not teach, preach. My forte is I love to preach. I love the preaching anointing. As a pastor, it's required, the Bible says, you know, to, you know, to be apt to teach. I have to be apt to teach. But uh, it's not my, it's not my, uh, you give me a chance to preach, I'll preach. Like one guy said, Pastor, you got to preach at the drop of a hat, and he'll drop his own hat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but when we, when we, um, as we ascertain the will of God, 
and we're submitting to the will of God. We're not copying somebody else. We're not trying to be like somebody else. We're going to go and do what God called us to. And I know this sounds like it rambles a lot, but I'm trying to throw in wisdom in here at the same time. I know it's not straight. I'm trying to, I'm trying to head off trouble in people's lives. I've seen too many people get in trouble because they just heard three points on a sermon. And they went out and tried to put all three points in application, and there was no wisdom surrounding it. And they made a mess of things for them and everybody else. But Jesus, you know, Jesus said, you know, his will was to do the will of him that sent him. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. And my will is to do the will of him that sent me. Now look at Hebrews 10. In verse 7 it says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written to me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings. An offering for sin thou wouldest not, and neither hadst pleasure therein, where, where it, um, were offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which we are all sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Notice Jesus said, I came to do thy will. I am telling you, if we would ever come to the place, we could just do the will of God and not worry about what we want. And not worry about what somebody else is doing and try to keep up with the Joneses. I remember that stupid song back in the 70s called The Basketball Jones. I got the basketball Jones. I got the basketball Jones. Everywhere I went to my basketball. <laughs> remember, remember, remember that song? Raise your hand if you remember that song. All right. Now some of you remember that song. I'm not making it up, am I? Yeah. Somebody sent us something the other day. And it was about a song I used to talk about all the time. <laughs> that they sang in the church and um, they didn't believe it was a real song but then their mother was singing that song as a special in her church and they, they sent me an apology <laughs> I can't even remember the song right this second <laughs> it could have been I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain I'm climbing, but I don't think that was a song. It was some other song that I used to quote that people would sing. And uh, they just didn't believe it was a real song. <laughs> Notice what Paul says here. He says, and, and, and remember when he was um, before King Agrippa, and he explained the vision to him. He says, wherefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision over in um, Acts chapter um, 28. We have to commit to the will of God. Ascertain the will of God, commit to the will of God. You have to be committed to His will. Because there will be other opportunities for you to do something else. That was a sound of brain gears stuck and not being able to move after I made that statement. Well, uh, well I hear them, they're starting to creak. <laughs> You have to stay committed to the will of God. Satan will always offer you an alternative to God's will. Now I know, as I was saying, I was being, I was being offered opportunities to come to Green, I mean not come to Greensboro, but to do something other than what I was doing in the church I was in in Greenville. Um, How do I finish this? I can't finish this up. I'm just about the time I got. I remember I had been I had been on the uh, with the church for for several years. My pastor would always tell me, "You're like an assistant. You know, uh, when when we get the money, uh, we'll hire you." Because you know, I just, the only reason I'm not hiring you right now is we don't have the money in the church budget to have you as an assistant pastor. But you're doing that work. You know, you're you're my right hand man. Da, 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 da. I've told the story before. Came to me one day at the place I was working, and said, "Look, uh, how much how much money do you make, and what you, what you need to give for a, um, a a notice? Because we're ready we're ready to bring you know bring you on staff. I'm gonna pray about it a little bit more this weekend, but we're gonna you know we're planning on just you know, be ready to give your notice and stuff and come on staff. Well, man, here we are. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's come, the day has come. Well, it comes back on Monday. Meets me, says, come outside. He says, well, look, you know, I know I talked to you on Friday about hiring you and da 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 And, you know, I've been telling you that you're my assistant and you're, you've been doing the work of an assistant, yada, yada, yada. But I was on the platform saying that I heard the Lord say, why have you considered so-and-so? So we hired him that day, like two hours later. You, you, you've prayed about it for three years on me, and then after hearing a voice, 
two hours later, you, you've hired the other person. Wow. Well, that kind of messed up. Your, that, that'll, that'll take this sugar frosting off your sugar frosted Wheaties. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you just kind of mess you up for the right then. I was messed up. I mean, I, I went home and I had I had to actually get, take off work, go home. I just cried for hours. I was, it just, I mean, it so blew me away. Now, but the Lord sent me there. I'd have people come and say, man, if, if that happened to me, I wouldn't have stayed. I'd have left. But the Lord sent me there. The Lord told me to go there. Hello. Just because it wasn't easy or didn't go how I wanted it to go, the Lord told me to go there. And he didn't tell me I could leave. See, am I going to follow God's will or my will? My will was to go start Ed Taylor, man of faith and power, faithful servants ministry. Hello. Had people come up and say, I don't believe the pastor did you right. You know, I tell you what, I think that was wrong to do that that way. If you start church, I'll go with you. Nope. Did you want to leave? Yep. Did you try to figure out how you could, you know, go to the Lord and give him the opportunity to tell you you could leave? Yep. I offered that suggestion to him a couple of times. <laughs> what do you think, Lord? Do you think I'd go ahead and start church somewhere else? You know? You know? Well, I'm appreciated. <clears throat> and, and listen, you know, you know, let's, let's come to the other side of this. The pastor believed he heard, he, he believed he heard a voice that said, and, and, and it, may, it may have been God, it may not have been God. I can't judge that. All I know is, you know, my side of the story. Okay? Um, I mean, it was hard. But what did the Lord tell me to do? What was his will for me to be there? Anybody ever felt unappreciated at your job? Anybody ever felt like you got, you know, kind of run over by something and you didn't get the right end of the stick? Anybody ever felt that way before? Well, I tell you, I felt it all. Then I had the other church trying to, hire, trying to get me to come over there as an assistant. I didn't know about it. I was like, yeah, talking about oblivious. And I, I, God, I think God gave me the gift of oblivion. <laughs> no, I think this, this one actually works to my good. Not the gift of rocking. <clears throat> let, me, let me preach, teach. <laughs> I mean, I was just so oblivious to what was going on in that church as they had me come over and preach. I didn't know they were trying me out. And then the, then, the, then, the, then the traveling minister tried to get me to leave and go, you know, go help them start their church. And then other the towns didn't do it. Um, when people were in our church a number of years ago, they were, they were splitting our church and they were talking about me and all this kind of I had no idea. I'm talking about so oblivious to what was going on. I'd walk up to him, put my hand on the shoulder and look at him and go, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. And you'd see a black man's face turn white. Every bit of the color ran right out of their face. Yep, and ran right, and they were married to a white girl. Her face, and it all ran out of her, and she turned red as a, as a fire hydrant. Oh my goodness, I'm telling you. And I, and I had no idea what was going on. I'd, just be walk, I'd walk right up to the people who were saying stuff and repeat what they said. And they'd all go back and meet right there in front of the audio room. And they'd say, who told him? Who told him? There's a prophet in the house of Israel. <laughs> There's a Holy Ghost in the pastor. It couldn't be that actually I was hearing from heaven because they had convinced themselves I was so I was so evil that uh, and so such a horrible pastor that somebody had to be secretly telling me what they were saying. So I was coming out and preaching about it. <laughs> the gift of oblivion was operation. I had no idea what was going on. Didn't even know what I said was hitting somebody. I was preaching about something and I just stopped and say something. Kind of like Dad Hagen that time walked up to that deacon and sat down beside him and said, Somebody's trying to steal my money. Yes. <laughs> Come to find out that deacon had been in the, in the meeting and said, they, There's too much money coming in the offerings. We shouldn't give him all of it. And they had just come out of that meeting, and he came in and sat down. And Brother Hagin went down and sat down beside him and said, Somebody's trying to steal my money. <laughs> the Holy Ghost will tell off on you. Now, how did I get off on all that? <laughs> but the Lord told me to be there. 
win. Buddy Harris would come in, and our, and our pastor was a, a regional director for South for Faith Christian Fellowship. And Buddy, you know, would sit down with me and talk to me and say, "Son," and he said, "You're doing, you're, you're in the right place. You're doing the right thing." He would just encourage me, and he would say things. He was just, he just a pastor. And Buddy, brother Buddy was a pastor to pastors. I mean, just I'm telling you, talking about a man who's a pastor to pastors. Buddy Harrison was a pastor to pastors, or ministers, ministers, and. Um, you know, when the door opened to come to Greensboro, the Lord spoke to me supernaturally ahead of time, told me. And you know what? That's kept me from go making and moving and doing other decisions. Well, I'm committed to the will of God. Now, if he, ever, if he, if he wakes me up and says, leave, I'm going to tell you something. During some difficult times in the past years, when people have done things to us, I've gone to the Lord and offered that opportunity again. <laughs> I'll, I'll travel. You know, I'll, I'll close it down and go help somebody else. I'll be a good associate pastor. Then I don't have to get my head chopped off when stuff goes wrong. You be the target. <laughs> I'll just help defend you, you know. Uh, you know, I've offered the Lord a few opportunities. Nah. All right. Once you've found out the will of God, once you com and you've got to commit to it. Commitment is I'm not changing unless he tells me something different. I'm not preaching what I hadn't practiced. Then you focus on the goal. You know, we... we um, we keep our eye fixed on the goal. I press toward the mark of the high calling, of the prize of the high calling in God, of God in Christ Jesus. Find the goal, commit to the goal, focus on the goal. I know I've kind of short, shortened this up a little bit and added a lot of stuff in around it. Paul ends up saying, I finished my course, I kept the faith. Amen. Let's, if you want to finish your course of joy, let's find the will of God, commit to the will of God, and finish the will of God. And don't be flaky Christians. That, you know, everything's a sign. And you know what people usually have as a sign? Something went wrong, so it's a sign to quit. No, that's just quitting. That's just quitting. There's no sign to it.